Hi, welcome to another quick video. Just showing you the Painted Poppies stamp set. And this is my favorite stamp out of that set. We'll be using that to make a card in the Rich Razzleberry color scheme. These two are uh, Poppy Parade. This one's Daffodil Delight. And I colored them in with the coordinating blends using the light and dark. I don't know if you can see, but right there, that's a little bit uh, lighter and then some darker over here. And we're going to show you how to do that using this stamp and the Memento Black Ink. So I've already got my cardstock cut. Let's see, I have to measure it for you. So it's three inches by four and a quarter. So three by four and a quarter. And we're just gonna ink this up. Whenever I have a, a large stamp, I kind of walk it across just to make sure I get the middle completely inked up and I look at it and yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna stamp this right here in the middle, right about there. And I'm just gonna hold it down and count to five and uh, then peel it right up. That looks great. So we're using the light and dark uh, Stampin' Blends. When you're looking at these, there's a brush tip and or brush tip was on this end and a bullet tip on that one. And you can see there's a thin line and a thicker line right there. Um, also that's on the back. So when you pick it up, you can quickly know which end you need to use. Um, we're gonna start with the lighter and we're going to be using the bullet tip on something this small. And we're just gonna color these in really quick and I'm gonna color every bit of these flowers with the uh, Stampin' Blends. You don't have to press very hard with these. They'll last longer if you brush on color gently. You can go back over it if you need to, um, but pressing harder will not make it darker. It'll just fray the ends of your tips, especially the brush tip is more susceptible to fraying. So make sure that when you're coloring with the brush tip, do it very gently. Don't press hard. Another quick tip about the blends, make sure you have something underneath. These are alcohol based and they do bleed through your paper. So always have scrap paper underneath. You don't, definitely don't want to be coloring on your nice countertops or your wooden table with these and nothing behind them. So always use a little protection back there. Um, all of our blends do come in light and dark. You can buy them in a two pack. It doesn't save you any money, but it does save you just typing in that one number instead of having to type in both. Um, we have a color lifter. So if you got outside the lines, you could take that color lifter and just rub it over it gently a few times and it would lessen or sometimes completely remove the color. You can also use the color lifter to make lighter spots in your projects. And we're almost done with the light. We'll just color that in as quickly as we can. And the Memento ink is great for the blends. It's a water-based ink. The stays on doesn't work so well. It's an alcohol based and uh, you want to use the opposite with the marker. So if you have a water based marker, like our Stampin' Write markers, you're going to use the stays on ink. All right, now we're going to go back over and again, we're going to use the bullet tip. And I'm just going to go in here and some areas and no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to choose some areas to go back over and create a little bit of a different shade. So you'll have some lighter areas and some darker areas. Maybe a couple of them I'll color in completely dark, like this one. And then I should have left one or two completely light. Maybe I'll leave that one completely light. How's that? That one completely dark and color in a little bit on that one. All right, there we go. 
that's all we need to do on that. On some of the bigger flowers, you could spend more time and do more detail, but these little tiny ones, it's kind of hard to do that. All right, I just have some black string. And we'll get these two ends together. And I want it to be right here on this pay, part of the paper. Pull that over a little bit. And it works better for me if I turn it upside down. I don't know if it means I tie my bows upside down or uh, whatever the reason, that just seems to work better for me. And I want it to be right below the end of the stems. This is a bit of a challenge. I picked up my packages of refill blades and I ran it right across my thumb, not realizing it. And the blade was actually on the outside and I just sliced into my thumb. So it's making it a little challenging today to do these bows because I can't feel anything with this thumb. I'll give it one more try. I'm bow challenged today. I'm impaired. All right, one more try. You wouldn't think a band-aid would make that much of a difference, but it is really making this difficult. Ta-da! All right, there, that's better. Just play with it a little bit until you get the bow, bow sizes exactly how you want them. Tighten them back up. And then we'll trim off the excess. These are my ribbon scissors. I only use them to cut fabric or ribbon. Uh, paper does dull your scissors, so try to keep one pair that you just use for ribbon and that way it'll have clean, pretty lines. We're gonna put some adhesive on the back of this. This is our snail adhesive, and it's a little more forgiving. Oh, I hate it when I get adhesive on my paper, because inevitably I put my card upside down right on top of it. And I'm just gonna eyeball that. Lay it down, it looks good, okay. Then press hard, and then we'll scooch this down just a little bit. This piece is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Huh, there you go. Five and three eighths by four and one eighth. And then the card size is the standard um, eight and a half by five and a half. Score it at four and a quarter. There's your card. Now, if you wanted to, you could use some dimensionals and pop either this matted area up, or you could have used some dimensionals and pop this up we didn't use any dimensionals today. We're just going to be just a flat card. And it's kind of hard to see the lines. So, of course, I don't have anything contrasting color. We'll just rip that up for a second. It's easier to get this even if you have a contrasting color behind your white. There we go. Much easier to see. All right, so there's our card again. This is Rich Razzleberry. This is Daffodil Delight. That's Poppy Parade. Looks great in all of these colors. So if you get this stamp set, try it in the different ones and see, see which one's your favorite. It looks really pretty in blue too, like uh, the peacock that we carry or even uh, the balmy blue if you want, like a lighter, more spring blue. Now let's decorate our envelope because we don't want naked envelopes. I'm gonna clean this real quick. Get the memento ink off. That's all nice and clean. Make sure it's dry. And then, again, walk that across because it's a big stamp. And I'm gonna take my flap, and I'm just gonna lay it down like this. And I'm gonna put this stamp kind of in the middle. Doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. Then I'm gonna ink it up again and I'll put this piece right here. And then I'll ink it up one more time. Put that piece right there. And now you've got a row of puppies across the back flap of your card. Well, that's our card for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked that, 
It's the Painted Poppy set. We'll be doing a couple more with the Painted Poppies. They're just really easy to work with and they make great cards. So if you need those, CherylSmith.StampinUp.net. I'd love to be your creative coach. Call me if you have any questions. Have a great day.